So God promises to answer the prayers of his people. But sometimes Christians pray for opposing things, different things that can't both come true. Does that mean then that God's prayer promises are not actually trustworthy? In fact, are illogical? Well, if you have a good biblical understanding of what God promises about prayer, that question may seem silly. But in fact, uh, it is a pretty common objection that unbelievers and skeptics raise against biblical teachings. Uh, it's really, honestly, one of the most common things that I hear when people object to Christianity is, look, God can't even keep his promises to answer Christians' prayers. A common example is, say, sports, sporting events, uh, where, kind of sadly, uh, very often when you have a sporting event, you'll have people who are presumably Christian on both sides praying that their team will win. Which, if I could mention just briefly, if you have the ear of the creator of the universe and you cannot think of anything better to pray for than that your team will score more touchdowns than some other team, you should probably reconsider whether you're using your prayer time as effectively as you can. But be that as it may, it's a fact that often you do have Christians on both sides of a sporting event praying that opposite teams would win. Or, to take a more serious example, perhaps Christians on both sides of an election, or both sides of a war, or something like that. So, can God keep his promise to answer our prayers? Well, the simple answer is, God promises to answer our prayers, but not to obey our commands. God doesn't ever say in the Bible that whatever we tell him to do, like some genie in a bottle... He will just, you know, salute and step on up and take care of business for us. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, perhaps the most compelling example of this is Jesus Christ himself, who the night before he was murdered, executed uh, on the cross, prayed that God would allow this cup, that is what was coming to him, would allow this cup to pass from him, uh, that he would not have to go through crucifixion. And God the Father did not answer the prayer of his own son. Why not? Because the prayer promises of God are that he will hear our prayers, he will consider our prayers, he will delight in answering our prayers when those prayers are ultimately for good. When what we're praying for is actually what we would really want if we understood the big picture. Romans 8.28 does tell us that all things work together for good, for God's people. But that wouldn't be the case if God just did whatever we told him to do, because often we don't know what's best, either for us or for the other guy. And therefore, God, like a wise father, answers our prayers when those prayers are for good. And therefore, if you have two Christians praying for opposite things, well, obviously those two opposite things can't both be for the best. And therefore, what God does promise is that he will hear both of those prayers and he will do what is best for his people, do what is best in the long run, but not that he'll just mindlessly obey each person's prayer. And again, we should be glad of that. We don't want to live in a world where each one of us is effectively God, blessed with the ability to do whatever we want simply by praying the right prayer. Thanks be to God that he doesn't just obey us. And not only does that then give us greater confidence in the events of the day, that they are ordained by God, not simply the result of some Christians' uh, perhaps poorly thought through prayer. So we, we have confidence in that. But it also goes back to solve our original problem. Because if God never promises to simply obey whatever we tell him in prayer, then there's no conflict when Two Christians pray for opposite things, and God doesn't do both. God will always do what's best. We can be thankful for that. 